Hi everyone, my name is Vasily Alenik and you're watching part 2 of integration testing in .NET Core series. Today we're gonna take a look at one of my biggest issues with integration testing in the past and I don't talk about project budgeting or anything like that. I'm talking about infrastructure provisioning. My biggest issue with pre-provisioned infrastructure was that I had to make sure the database and all the infrastructure was up and running and the data was in a specific state before I was able to run the tests. And second of all, well, if multiple build pipelines were running in parallel, we had interference between the tests and the tests were flanky. Although there are many issues, there is one library that might help you, which we are going to go over today. So test containers is a really lightweight NuGet package that would allow you to bootstrap your integration tests against a real instance of a service running in a Docker container. To get started with test containers, we first need to make sure we have a custom web application factory. And that's really easy by creating a custom class, which we are going to call API factory. And this class will inherit from web application factory of I API marker. We'll also need to override the configure webhost method. So in our case, it will be a protected override configure webhost. And over here, we no longer need the base one. We'll need builder configure services. And over here, we can override things that we have wired up in our program.cs inside the API itself. So I'll start off with removing the previously set up application DB context. In our case, I'll need a descriptor. If descriptor is different from null, I'm going to remove the descriptor itself. And here I'll specify a simple connection string that we will use. In our case right now, it will be just left for string empty. And then services at db context application db context with options to use SQL server and specify the connection string. Now that we have this in place, I'll go over to the create habit endpoints test. And instead of the I class feature over here of this web application factory, I'm going to specify just API factory. And we don't need this anymore and this anymore. I'll go back to the API factory itself. And for the time being, I'll copy the connection string from app settings and paste it instead of the empty string and then go back to create habit endpoints test. And if I run this integration test, it should still pass. So we have the same result. Now we have a custom API factory that overrides the connection string. In our case, it's still the same connection string to still the same Azure SQL database. But right now we have it inside a custom API factory. The next thing that I'm going to do is basically stop this container and start using the test containers library. Inside the integration tests, manage NuGet packages, I'll search for test containers and we have it over here. And then over here we have test containers SQL Edge as well. So I'm going to install this one as well. To get a real instance of a Docker container, we will need to have, first of all, private read-only I container. The variable itself will be an on-demand SQL DB, which will be a new container builder. And I'll bring all on the using. And then over here, I'll copy a small setup that I have already in place. And I will need to remove this using over here since it was mistakenly added and we need .NET test containers. What we have over here is basically a new container builder that will pull the image that we specify over here, which is in our case, Microsoft Azure SQL Edge latest. Uh, the name of the container will be an on-demand SQL database with port binding. So we will use port 1500 and then the container port itself will be 1433. Uh, we are going to set the environment variables for the super admin password. In our case, it will be heavy hit pass one. Uh, we're going to need to accept the EULA and specify the PAD. In our case, it will be just a basic developer. And over here, we have a wait strategy that will specify that we need to wait for the port to be available before we can use this specific on-demand SQL database. 
In order to start up this on-demand SQL database, I will need to run a couple of async methods. And in the previous video, I've shown you how we can do that. So in our case, it will be an async lifetime, which we are going to implement the initialize async and dispose async. Inside the initialize async, I'm going to go to on-demand SQL database, uh, start async. I need to make this method asynchronous and await this one and inside the dispose async i'll need to first make it async and over here await on demand sql database stop async when we start up it will start the on demand sql database container and then when we finish up running our tests it will make sure it disposes of all the containers that we have used in order to run our tests uh, we need to make a small change to the habit service installer over here and we will need an internal method that will apply our migrations at startup. So I'm going to copy this method and over here, right? So app apply migrations. Well, there might be some better ways to apply those migrations, not necessarily on API startup, but this is the easiest one and it will suffice for our purposes right now. So now that we have a custom container over here, I can replace this connection string to the connection string to on-demand SQL database. And I'm going to put a couple of breakpoints over here and debug the integration tests for creating a habit. And once we hit this small breakpoint, I'm going to go over, start async and open up the Docker desktop and over here, you can see that we have two containers. So first of all is our on-demand SQL database. And then we have test containers, Rook and some guide over here, I believe. Uh, my first question when I was running my tests initially was what the hell is this test container Rook thingy, which kind of reminds me of DevNote references, but hey. In the context of test containers, Rook is basically a sidecar that removes our created containers for the integration test. So it's basically a cleanup utility that runs in parallel with all our other containers. So by basically using the Rook, we are making sure that there are no leftovers after our integration tests are run. Over here, we have went over the on-demand SQL, so the container itself is started. I'll resume it. And once the test has been run, we go over to the dispose async method, which will stop the on-demand SQL database and clean everything up. Now, if I go over to the dashboard, it should be removed over here. As you can see, the SQL database has been cleaned up and our test is successful. This is the most basic approach to running an integration test against the real Docker container in which we have our SQL database. But this approach is really verbose because uh, yeah, you can see how many things we have specified over here and it works for running custom containers, some custom APIs or stuff of that sort. But for running SQL databases, we have an even easier approach, which I'm going to show you right now. All we'll need is to remove this custom container and we'll need another SQL Edge container that we have from our Nougat package. So this will be our SQL Edge DB, our new SQL Edge builder that we have over here. And sorry for the typo. And here we have with password heavy hit pass one. And all we need to do is basically build. Now we can use the SQL Edge to start it async and stop it async. And we no longer need this connection string because we can use SQL Edge to get a connection string. We have a method for that. One. And with that, set in place, we can go over to our unit tests, run the unit test and get the exact same results. So this is really the easiest way out to set up your test infrastructure by running against test containers. And I want to cover one more thing over here, which is the data cleanup. So if you remember previously in our API tests, we had this list of habit IDs and we were running 
basically HTTP request against the delete endpoint to remove that data. Some tests might be more intricate to remove the data than these simple basic CRUD operations. There is an even easier way out. For that we are going to use a library called Respawn, which is a really great library. So if I go over to our Nougat packages and type Respawn, I can see over here it and I'm going to install it. So now that it's successfully installed, I'm going to go over to the API factory itself and I'm going to need two new things over here. So first of all, it's going to be a private DB connection, DB connection, which I'm going to default it and make sure it's not null. And then I'm going to need a responder that I'm going to default as well. So what responder does, it basically creates a snapshot of the database and then you can restore all your data to that exact snapshot. So in short terms, we're just cleaning up the database itself. So in order to make sure that our database is clean before running any tests, I need to go over to initialize async and over here, create my DB connection and create my restore point for the responder. In our case, the DB connection will be a new SQL connection with the connection string from the SQL Edge database. And then the responder itself will be a new responder create async uh, with a DB connection. And over here, I need to await this call. And over here, I can specify a couple responder options. First of all, the adapter, which will be DB adapter from respawn. And I'm going to use SQL Server. And then I'm going to use schemas to include. And basically over here will be a new array with DBO as schema. As well, we can have, as you can see, checking temporal tables, uh, timing out, schemas to exclude, tables to ignore, tables to include. Well, basically we have a lot of different customizations for your options. And yeah, small mistake I made initially was before running the create async, I will need to open up the connection. So this will basically be the point to which we will reset our database. Sorry if I used restore in the past, it's really resetting our data. So for that, I'm going to need to use a public async task reset database async method. Over here, I'm going to use responder reset async and specify the database connection and I'm going to await this call. So we have this method which we can use to reset our database. And if I go over to create habit endpoint tests, I no longer need this habit IDs over here. So I'm going to remove them. Uh, I no longer need to add it and I don't need this part of code over here. So the next thing is I'm going to run some optimizations in the code. I'm not going to use the API factory itself. I'm going to remove this part over here and remove this part over here. And we're going to define a private read-only HTTP client, which we will be using in our tests. So we will not be exposing the web application factory itself. So for the HTTP client, I'm going to run create client over here. And for the dispose async, since we don't have a reference to the web application factory, I can specify over here a private task, which will be basically a reset database. And the reset database, I'm going to assign it to a uh, this one. So all we need to do right now is basically await reset database and that's it. And by doing this, we're going to basically just call the reset database async. I will need to remove this usings since we no longer need them. And one more thing over here that we can do is basically have method private async task initialize db responder and copy this part of code over here, paste it and just call this one method over here 
so we have a cleaner initialize async method. One thing that I still don't want to do over here is this part where I create the HTTP client inside the test. So I'm going to go over to API factory itself. So over here, I'm going to specify and public HTTP client that we are going to reuse. So this one HTTP client will go before initialize DB responder. So over here, I'm going to specify that the HTTP client equals this create client. And I, yeah, basically I don't need this. Once our client has been created, we're gonna initialize the database responder which will take into consideration the tables that we have applied via our migrations. So if we had the previous setup, we would run into issues where the database responder would not catch the habit tables. So all we need to do right now is application factory dot HTTP client. Now that we have everything set in place inside the API factory, I have put a breakpoint into the dispose async and reset database. So I don't need the, this one. I'm going to go over to our create habit endpoint test and debug this integration test. We have hit our reset database async breakpoint. Over here, I'll need to go to SQL Edge DB and get the connection string. I'll copy it, open up Azure Data Studio, enter a new connection string. So the connection is successful. I'm going to go over to the habits table get our top 1000 records. We have two over here. And now once I hit the reset async, if I query this once again, you can see that we have no data remaining over here. I'll just run this test to the end. So with that, the video has come to an end. We have created our test infrastructure using test containers. Pragmatically, we have a database that spins up for every test collection that you have in your test suite. So if you have, yeah, let's say more than one endpoint test, so you have create endpoint, delete endpoint, update endpoint test, you would basically have more instances of your databases spun up for every test collection. In case you want to optimize things and reuse the same database across multiple test uh, multiple tests, you might create a custom test collection that you could reuse across your tests. All it will need to do is basically inherit from iCollection fixture of API factory, and that way you will be able to reuse your database and responder will make sure that all the data across your tests is cleaned up. That's all I had for today. I'll leave a link over here to a playlist where you'll find a lot of neat things I have covered on my channel while you're waiting for the next one. Have a nice one.